Good afternoon. Welcome to the first quarterly HIMSS SIMS Enterprise Engine Community Webinar. Look for more education from the community regularly throughout the year. I am Roger Voodoo, radiologist, clinical informaticist at the Defense Health Agency, and I have the pleasure of serving as today's moderator for using the HIMSS Digital Imaging Adoption Model to advance your enterprise imaging strategy, presented by Kim Garrett and Dr. Chris Raw. With a strong background in clinical imaging and workflow process improvement, Kim Garrett has more than two decades of business and IT leadership experience helping healthcare organizations optimize the use of technology. As a principal consultant, healthcare strategies at Logic House, Kim works directly with healthcare clients to develop and implement clinically focused IT strategies that center on leveraging business value and providing an optimized user experience. She currently serves as co-chair of the HIMSS SIM Enterprise Engine Community and chair for the HIMSS Analytics Digital Imaging Adoption Model Global Development Team. Dr. Chris Roth serves as Vice Chair Information Technology and Clinical Informatics and is Director of Imaging Informatics Strategy for Duke University Medical Center. In addition to being a neuro neuroradiologist, Dr. Roth plays a role as physician leader for assessing and implementing imaging technology, clinical decision support, and image sharing capabilities across North Carolina, as well as ensuring the usability and integrity of electronic medical patient records. Chris also serves as co-chair of the HIMSIM Enterprise Imaging Community. As leaders of HIMSIM Enterprise Imaging Community, both Chris and Kim have been instrumental in advancing enterprise imaging through strategic thought leadership their involvement with Enterprise Imaging, DIAM, educating the healthcare community, and a series of HIMSS SIM collaborative white papers, including a foundation for enterprise imaging and considerations for exchanging and sharing medical images for improved collaboration and patient care. I've also had the pleasure to meet Kim and Chris throughout the years at different conferences, and I look forward to their guidance and insights as I start my own journey in enterprise imaging. After the presentation, we'll be engaging in a question and answer session. Be sure to engage through the chat window at the bottom of the webinar control panel. Let's begin in the webinar. Welcome, Kim. Kim, you may have yourself on. Thank you, Nikki. Sorry. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us, or good morning, depending on which time zone you're in. Um, we are looking forward to sharing information with you today about the HIMSS Digital Imaging Adoption Model, or the DIAM, and how you can use that to advance your enterprise imaging strategy. Um, I'm very excited about this conversation today, uh, not because what you'll hear me say, but what you will um, hear Dr. Chris Roth uh, talk about in his real world experience of participating in uh, some early uh, work that we have done with the digital imaging adoption model. So we'll get started here. And again, remember, if you have questions, please submit those through uh, the question window. So we always like to start our conversations with what is enterprise imaging. For those of us that have been working on this for what feels like years and years and years and, and has been years, um, it's second nature to us, but we also appreciate that many organizations are really just starting to talk about enterprise imaging and even have different definitions of what enterprise imaging is. To some organizations, enterprise imaging is looking across their, their landscape and possibly they've gone through a lot of acquisition and merger activity. And so they may be looking to consolidate their disparate radiology packs into a single unified instance of a radiology packs. And to that, and to those organizations, that could be their definition of enterprise imaging because they enterprise approach for radiology. For the purposes of today's conversation, and in general though, when we talk about enterprise imaging, we really truly are talking about all types of images, 
regardless of the type of acquisition source that's used to produce those images or the service line um, that is producing those images, we're talking about everything from diagnostic imaging to procedural imaging, evidence-based imaging, and then those documents or image-based or multimedia-based reports um, that are generated throughout uh, both an image production um, phase as well as an image consumption phase. So we're talking about all realms of imaging uh, when we talk about this. We know that um, from estimates that we learned from IDC and other analyst organizations that 2.3 zettabytes of healthcare information is projected to exist globally by the year 2020. It's further estimated that imaging data, that clinical imaging data represents 70% of that overall total of 2.3 or greater zettabytes. That's a huge amount of data. And we're finding what we know in our healthcare organizations is we, we may be caring for that data very comprehensively, or as the case is with most organizations, we are um, really just starting to think about how we need to care for that information outside of the traditional imaging space, spaces such as radiology and cardiology. What I'm showing here is the new revision for the electronic medical record adoption model from HIMSS Analytics. And the reason I'm showing this slide is to further stress the industry recognized importance of this tsunami of imaging data that is going to be uh, facing our organizations and already is facing our organizations. In the prior MRAM model, you really started to hear imaging contemplated out of stage five. Well, in the release that we see here in January of 2018, we now see that it's a stage one. It's a basic requirement to be meaningfully managing PACS information or pictures, uh, imaging information, both in DICOM and non-DICOM formats, depending on how your organization wants to ultimately manage imaging data. And what this means is that 70% of the images generated inside your organization need to be meaningfully managed, not just DICOM. It could be, oh, that's a slam dunk. We put, you know, by far radiology generates the most images. We're mature on our packs. We've got this one, check the box. What you need to also recognize is this is for non-DICOM data as well. And there's an expectation that 70% of your non-DICOM data that's generated will also be meaningfully managed. So in these maturity models with HIMSS, we have a three-year certification process. So if you were already certified at a stage six or seven MRAM, you have until your natural three-year certification point to recertify your stage level. However, if you are a five or if you were an MRAM stage five or lower, on January 1st, you are automatically reset to zero and have to recertify if you choose to. Um, and so we encourage you to be looking at not just the images that are produced in those traditional areas that you're used to, but also start reaching out across your organization to really understand um, what types of other images are being produced or what types of images need to be produced and how those need to be consumed. As a further illustration of the importance of imaging data and the importance of starting to meaningfully care for that information now, um, the SIM organization in collaboration with HIMSS um, has been working to develop a second iteration of the digital imaging adoption model or the DIAM, or if you're in some geographies in the world, we call it the DM. And this model 
initially driven by HIMSS and the ESR, the European Society for Radiology, um, first was developed in Europe, and we'll talk about that in a minute, um, but it, it sought to help organizations understand how to develop a level of radiology focused digital image management maturity. In our SIM, our HIMSIM Enterprise Imaging Community that started in 2014, from the onset, we were talking about how we could have a similar model that incorporated enterprise imaging. And so we worked with HIMS leaders and leaders at ESR to develop a second iteration of the model, same model, same graphic, same basic tenants. However, organizations will have an option to focus their survey efforts or their assessment efforts on radiology only or to look at enterprise imaging holistically across your enterprise. What is really great about these models, whether you choose to you know, wear the badge of you are a stage six um, HIMSS analytics diam organization, or whether you are looking to just understand how to best get your arms around all of this imaging data that can be produced inside your organization, the models, the uh, maturity models that HIMSS provides really provides that roadmap for you. It provides those considerations that you should look at as you're moving along your maturity journeys. So again, whether you want to use this as um, something to really compare yourself against your peers, um, as a badge of honor, which a lot of organizations take much pride in being able to say that they're an MRAM stage seven organization, um, because honestly, using these models is one way to illustrate that your organization is progressively le fully leveraging the technology investments that are being made to help drive the care outcomes that we're looking for in our value-based world. Um, so we give you that in a roadmap that will help you to advance your organization. Um, for those of you who have uh, begun your enterprise imaging journey or thought about it, it is uh, very complex. There are a lot of things to take into consideration. And so for that reason, uh, we have developed this model. It is an eight stage model because we start with zero um, where you have no uh, electronic image management or very limited um, electronic image management. And I will say we're gonna focus on the enterprise imaging model here on today's call. Um, and then we take you up through the stages and to become a stage two organization, you have to have at least two areas that are meaningfully contributing images um, digitally and being managed inside your organization. That does not mean at the beginning that you need to have a vendor neutral archive in place or what we like to say now is a central imaging repository in place. Those expectations come as you move up the ladder. But of course, to be considered enterprise, you really have to have um, active image production and management taking place in two or more areas. Areas. And as you move up the ladder, say for instance, when you get to a stage five, we require that you have at least five areas where you are meaningfully managing that data. So there is um, a very specific way to move through uh, the journey. You can move um, in different stages. You don't have to follow everything uh, as a zero through seven. However, if you are interested in having an actual certification to understand where you're at and to be able to officially share that with your peers, then you will want to at least consider taking the journey as, um, as we outline within the model. So how did we get here? I talked a little bit about that. So in 2015, HIMSS and uh, the ESR started uh, together to develop the DIAM and it was introduced um, in March of 2016. In 
2016 and 2017, really, we started talking about how we could add this enterprise imaging flavor to the survey before it came to North America. There were already uh, many organizations, I think to date, there's probably about 60 to 70 organizations outside of North America who have participated in um, the Diane for Radiology survey, and we've gotten really good um, feedback and traction from that. Um, so since 2017, there are, has been a group of individuals represented by basically every geography around the globe, uh, comprised of um, physicians and imaging informaticists to really look at what the industry of enterprise imaging looks like and then inform those views into uh, the survey that we now have um, for enterprise imaging. This has been a really interesting um, undertaking. It's It's been so gratifying and um, very uh, a, a very strong learning experience for me to, to work with such talented people to develop this model and not just develop a model that fits North America, that, but a model that actually fits the globe. And when you start talking to other organizations around the world, some basic assumptions that we make in North America, we have to rethink when we're talking about developing a model that's going to serve every geography, um, such as in some uh, geographies, they actually have more mature image management strategies and imaging technologies than they do electronic medical record technologies. And it's just how those organizations in those geographies have taken their technology journeys. So we have to care for that as we as we move through this and develop this model. And, and it's been a labor of love. We have had weekly meetings uh, with people from around the world now for over the past year. So as you can imagine, uh, it truly is a labor of love and very interesting debates and conversations that have come out of this and, and a tremendous amount of thought um, and input put into this. We also um, opened the survey um, in its development stage to vendors because we wanted to receive external feedback um, on the criteria and how we were thinking about the criteria. And it was important to us to hear from the vendors on how they see the technology moving forward, on how they see the needs and the outcomes that can be based on technology, what those will be so that we had a forward facing view into this. Then, um, in November, we kicked off a controlled survey pilot, um, and Chris will talk a bit about his experience with that pilot um, here in a few minutes, but we wanted to trial the survey and then refine the survey based on the feedback that we received from real organizations across the world that helped us in refining the survey. And there were approximately 15 organizations that participated in the pilot of the DIAM EI survey. And then in, at HIMSS, on February 13th at 1.45, you will be able to attend, if you're at HIMSS, um, the official launch of the digital imaging adoption model for North America and for enterprise imaging um, at that time. So we're super excited about that. So I would like to take just a minute to thank uh, the work group members that have diligently volunteered so much of their time to this effort. I won't go through every name, um, but you may recognize some of the names on there. We've had great participation from folks. So if any of you are on the line, thank you, thank you. Um, but you can see that we have active um, representation from SIM, we have active representation from HIMS, we have uh, EOSIMI uh, represented as well as the ESR, and then you can see the different geographies that we have represented as well. Just another shout out to the organizations that have enabled us all, including HIMS, uh, to be able to bring this model to you and really move the mark on enterprise imaging. So why participate? And I've touched on this a bit, and it's you know it's really not just about being able to compare compare yourself to your peers and to have the badge of honor, but more meaningfully, it's trying to provide you a roadmap on how to improve how we deliver 
patient care, how we collaborate and coordinate on patient care while improving the safety, the quality, and the efficiency. It's how we learn from other organizations and how we learn about ourselves and identify the technology gaps that we have and then be able to leverage that inside of our organizations. Hopefully you can lever this inside, leverage this inside of your organization to be able to say, this is a global industry benchmark. This is how other organizations of our size are performing. This is how we're performing. And if you're not performing as you would like to be, then this gives you a tool to be able to use internally to make your arguments as to how you could be doing things differently. We also very much so are, um, are pushing um, data standards, governance, the adoption of best practices so that we begin to reduce the amount of difference in how we uh, leverage um, our abilities to care for patients and, and can build upon interoperability and all of those things that we need to really leverage imaging data in the fullest way that we can to really drive us to personalized medicine, to really enhance our ability to have meaningful um, augmented intelligence algorithms and to really leverage our data in the best ways possible to improve patient outcomes, and then also uh, be able to measure how we're doing that along our own journey of, of how we are progressing. So very quickly, um, I'm just going to run through this. Um, you certainly are invited and we encourage you to um, attend a variety of um, diam related events that will be taking place at hims 19 but very quickly i wanted to walk you through the assessment process and it's pretty painless um, to begin with anyway as with anything that's worthwhile it does take some thought and it will take some organization um, with you inside your organization but um, first what we like for you to do is we want to instead of you going through an entire survey process and bringing different people together in your organization because remember we're talking enterprise and we know that imaging or imaging related activities occur across at least 40 different clinical service area. So likely you're not going to be able to speak to one or two people and get all the answers that you need to complete this survey. So what we've done is made it really a two-part process. The first part is for you to identify your imaging service lines and submit that data to HIMSS so that they can review that information to ensure that you're in a position just with the simple acquisition activities of what you are collecting today from your imaging service lines to ensure that you have enough that qualifies you to have an EI um, journey conversation. And then once that feels good, you've passed that gate, then we invite you to take the full-blown survey. And Chris will talk about his experience, his real-world experience with that survey. But we've, we've written it in a way where we hope that it only takes you a few hours to complete and that you don't have to bring an army of people to the table to be able to complete the survey. But we also recognize, again, going back to the true nature of enterprise imaging, is that it touches so many different service lines and there's so many different types of activities that are going on. Um, you will need to be prepared to have those conversations within your organization. Once you've completed your survey, um, you submit that back to HIMSS and then they will review it and classify um, your organization against the stages as, uh, as appropriate. And then as with the other HIMSS maturity models, if you from your um, survey responses appear that you are qualified at a stage six or stage seven, then HIMS will reach out to you and have additional conversations on if you would like to participate in an on-site validation exercise so that you can be officially certified as a stage six or seven organization. So the sample survey, um, this first part, the, identify, the identification of imaging services that we ask you to complete for a gate. Um, here we're actually, I misspoke earlier, we're actually looking that you have between three 
and five different service areas to start this journey and we talk about what those are we provide drop downs and then we ask you to look at the percentage of your overall organization's images that are generated from those service lines and with that information then we'll know if it is worthwhile of your time to move forward with the survey so just an example of what that looks like uh, nothing too scary there. And then the part two piece will be going through the survey and answering a series of questions, some enterprise level questions, but then also questions that pertain to the specific service areas that you outline that you would like to have assessed as part of um, your digital imaging adoption maturity. So a number of questions, a wide range of categories that we go through. Um, to understand what your maturity looks like in each of those areas and for you to be um, informed as to what you should be looking at. And I think that the survey also is a really great tool for any organizations that are thinking about um, upgrading or changing out their um, any PACS technology uh, for any service line or looking at um, deploying a central image repository or VNA technologies, looking to purchase an enterprise imaging platform. These survey questions are a great way to inform you on what is important to and help you um, prioritize what is important to your organization and how you should be focusing your conversations with those vendors. I don't want to go too deeply into this because Chris is going to hit on some of this, but we also want to save this for the official launch announcement at HIMSS, and there will be a lot of other conversation about this when this is formally launched and made available to North America again on February 13th. Once you complete the survey, though, you are presented back with a gap report that will show you how you scored within each of these areas and then where the gaps are that you need to work uh, towards to close the gap and this will easily uh, be known to you as you look at it on what areas are performing really well and which areas you could choose to focus on if you are in fact interested in moving up that ladder. So with that uh, quick overview, I'd now like to turn it over to Dr. Chris Roth to tell us a little bit about his real world experiences as he has participated um, in the pilot surveys, uh, both for the radiology survey and the enterprise imaging survey. Thank you, Kim. So this, uh, I'll summarize um, what Kim said and say that this um, this has been a terrifically valuable experience for Duke. Um, and I'll for those of you who are more on the on the SIM side, I'm going to talk just quickly about Duke's history. If you're on the SIM side, uh, it's two slides, some of which you may have seen before, but just to give everybody a, a level set uh, so that an organization who's thinking about taking the DIAM can uh, put into context what one organization did and where they're sitting in terms of maturity. Uh, I'm hoping it will be helpful. So uh, Duke started this journey uh, towards enterprise imaging maturity in 2011 when we wrote an internal white paper that was about 12 pages. Uh, it was a Word document and nobody read it. Uh, but what it did was it was the first seeds being planted between a few of the big specialties to start visioning together uh, around what do we need to do in the future around image management for the big specialties. And then we expected it would trickle into the smaller specialties as well. We focused on our electronic health record deployments 2012, 13 and 14. Uh, we picked up the pieces from the electronic health record deployment in 2015. 2016, we commissioned our uh, imaging governance committee with a number of different uh, physician specialties on it, setting the goal of one big topic per month, uh, one month on image storage. We were going to you know, figure out what we were going to do strategically in image storage the first month. The second month was image viewing. The third was image exchange. The fourth decision support, and so on. The strategy got hashed out over the areas that we were interested in, and uh, eventually we created our 
uh, strategic plan in 2017 to get us through 2019. Uh, the format of the strategy also has evolved over time. It started as a Word document, as I said, evolved into PowerPoint and Visio now using an enterprise arch architecture platform. And most of you are familiar with the white papers that came out uh, from the HIMSIM collaboration in 2016, really using the, uh, the pioneers' experience and expertise from Mayo Clinic and Cleveland Clinic and Cincinnati Children's and other sites that are really moving the field forward. In October of 2016, I met Jorg, uh, Jorg Studzinski of HIMSS Analytics um, while at a, at a HIMSS event. And he sent me the pilot version, then the pilot version of the radiology uh, diam, and I took it. Uh, after I submitted my gap assessment, um, a few months later, I got it, it was. It took a while because it took me a while to go through it. Uh, but in March of 2017, I finally got it in, and a few, um, a little bit later, he sent back the gap assessment, which was about four to five pages of learnings from peer sites, predominantly at the time from sites in Europe, uh, because that's most of where the pilot diam for radiology had been so far. There was one other American site, uh, and Duke graded out for radiology as a stage four. And it felt about right to be graded uh, for radiology specifically in March of 17 around a stage four knowing what we knew. So at the time, we had a central repository of ENA supporting a few specialties uh, or pockets of specialties with imaging available through the electronic health record. We still had several PAC silos um, that we were trying to stubbornly get rid of. We felt really comfortable with the human side of our organization with respect to governance and quality and safety, uh, but we really hadn't deployed much in the way of true clinical decision support. We had the application in that we use today, but it was in silent mode at the time. We did have image sharing in place that we were very happy with. Uh, pretty much all of North Carolina has been on the same platform. Uh, it's a vended platform for single year, uh, for several years. It is vended, like I said, it's not a standards or a, um, a government organization based as is the norm in some other countries, uh, but we were pretty comfortable with it. Patient engagement in imaging was quite limited and analytics were okay, not spectacular. And the bottom line of, of all of that was the radiology DM figured all of that out. Uh, you know, we scored above 70% up through stage four, which we pretty much anticipated, but the, the additional more mature aspects, like I talked about, we just weren't, weren't really there yet. And to see how far I still had to go left me feeling somewhere between depressed and motivated. Uh, it also, whatever that feeling was, it also left me feeling quite empowered at the same time because I had an objective, well-established organization confirming my suspicions of where we were coming up short. And I had something my informatics leadership would listen to. Uh, I didn't know how much Hims was um, known on the operational hospital non-informatics leadership side, but I knew for sure that if I could get the uh, the technology folks, the ITC suite in my organization on board, which I, I knew they would be, because they were already taking uh, the MRAMs for the EHR, uh, that operations would certainly support and follow the recommendations of Hims. One of the big benefits, to Kim's point, uh, that the the diam made easier for me was messaging around my organization uh, what the strategic direction was going to be. And it wasn't just Chris's opinion. It wasn't just a single peer reviewed paper, uh, but it was something with the backing of a powerhouse organization like HIMSS. I got uh, the gap assessment PDF back, which was full of support for our existing ideas uh, and had a few new ideas that you know, our governance group or myself hadn't really thought of yet. And it gave us food for thought. Uh, in some cases, the recommendations were really spot on and, and I felt urged to pursue them. Uh, it did help me spur folks around my organization towards turning uh, our qualified clinical decision support mechanism on in a more aggressive way. Uh, 
it also gave me some things that you know I looked at and said, yeah, I'm not really sure this is not Im that important to me. Uh, it may be for some other parts of um, of the world, but you know, for me, you know, medical knowledge databases dedicated to imaging. Um, nobody was really banging down the door for that mm -hmm. one. Prioritization is alive and well, right? So I, I looked at that one and said, okay, not a bad idea, but we just can't do that right now. Uh, and I started focusing on other other areas. One thing that I think is is valuable to to talk about is how expert the folks that designed the survey um, and how ex designed the survey were and were um, in supporting the survey. Specifically, the HIMSS analytics folks we worked with in Germany um, were really helpful, uh, and I, I suspect they're going to be really helpful to you too. So that if you need one-on-one -on -one time to make sure you understand the question, the thrust of the question, the best practice that it was trying to uh, really get at, this was something I did a couple of times in this survey. Uh, it helped me take the survey and it helped me make the organization better because my questions. Uh, I know helped them edit the survey questions and it provided better feedback to me after I was done. Fast forward to uh, almost all of the work that Kim did being complete and I got a message uh, saying that, you know, we'd be honored for Duke to be one of the pilot sites for the enterprise diam. And it was a good learning experience, again, going through it for the enterprise side. Uh, I provided what I think was a lot of constructive feedback into the survey itself um, with, with plenty, of, plenty of red lines to help clarify little details here and there or provide a little bit of perspective. It took me, and I was the one to do it, it took me around six hours to do the survey. Uh, which I think is reasonable because the quality of the content that comes back justifies it. I, this is not a, an overconfident statement, but I believe I know as much about imaging at my organization as any one physician might have at their site. Uh, and that's because I, I care about it and I try to immerse myself in it. So at other hospitals, it may take you know, some, some more amount of time than six hours. Uh, for a smaller site, it may take less. What I had to do is I filled out a series of the survey questions and then I had to phone a friend in more than one case for information that I didn't have the answer to. So one of our groups that we, uh, we had on the survey was ophthalmology. Uh, I had to call their head administrator, their head IT analyst for their PACs, their IT doc counterpart to me, uh, and their vice chair for clinical ops to answer the questions that I just didn't have a good sense of in ophthalmology. I have a pretty good sense of their technology, but I didn't know a lot of their processes. And it was valuable to get that information to fill in some of the gaps for me about what was actually happening in my own organization. A lot of the questions I was asking, it felt like a greatest hits from many of the SIM annual meetings, uh, conversations that we've had before. So I take the survey, uh, send it, and I get it back. And I, I distinctly remember feeling when the email came back with my results, I felt very similar to when I got my med school board score results. Uh, I was excited to open this email first. And here are some of the results. I'm not going to go into it because it's going to be uh, part of the official launch at HIMSS. Uh, but you know, a number of organizations surveyed, most organizations uh, were relatively uh, towards the lower end of the spectrum, including me. Uh, when I saw the score come back of a stage three, I was kind of disappointed until I kept reading and I realized that there's actually a lot of information in here that will help me recognize that, you know, yeah, I was a stage three right now, but I'm actually scoring a lot better than that. Uh, for background, we at Duke actually don't have at cardiology absolutely everywhere it needs to be. We have been working with our cardiology PAX vendor for almost four years to make data available uh, uniformly to our central repository. It's been really painful. We're close to solving it now, but uh, we don't have it everywhere that we want it to be. And this is genuinely a hang up. 
Uh, we shouldn't be a high scoring organization without cardiology everywhere we need to be and we were rightfully dinged for it. If we had cardiology in place, we would be a stage five. Uh, and even the two stages that we were missing for decision support and value-based imaging and advanced analytics, we weren't that far off. So while it was quite low in terms of the, the single number stage, uh, I left pretty optimistic about where we were sitting because there was a lot of information that I gathered uh, about what we were doing well and some low hanging fruit for where we can do better. The gap assessment, one of the things that it does, uh, if you're a site that doesn't have a roadmap, doesn't have a, um, a, a plan in place, you don't have a good sense of what other organizations are doing, uh, I've, I decided to put this one on the, the webinar so folks could see it. This is from us. Um, and what it is is basically an environmental scan of the different organizations that have taken the survey. And it gave me a good idea for what other sites have deployed out and how well integrated they are. Uh, if you're somebody who cares about, you know, what's everybody else doing, let me at least make sure I'm kind of close to, to them. I'm in the Peloton somewhere. Uh, then this will be helpful for you. For me, I sort of had a good idea for where we were and what direction we were going, but if you're more on the, the immature side, it may be helpful for you. What has the DM done at Duke? So I think this is probably the most important part uh, of anything I'm gonna say. I feel like sometimes, and I don't think I'm the only one on the call that feels this way, but I, I feel like sometimes I'm shouting into the wind uh, at my day job. I don't think I need a lot of validation, but it was nice to get a little. Uh, I believe the survey adds support to my leadership uh, to recognize imaging as a critical and also an importantly challenging component for any health record, any health organization to do well. I think, personally, I think more people understand it as critical then understand it as challenging, time intensive and nuanced, especially if those folks are not on the imaging side of your organization. One of the questions, um, one of the more basic questions in the survey points to a strategic roadmap, if you have one. Uh, as I mentioned, we at Duke have had one for, for many years and we, were, we are refreshing our 2017 to 19 roadmap for 2020 to 2022 right now. Uh, and to Kim's comments earlier, if you don't have a roadmap, the survey gives you very good strategic direction to make one of your own. And if you do have one, it's a good cheat sheet to prioritize the details of what should be on your strategic plan. And also, I believe it can help you exclude the things that maybe shouldn't be on uh, the earliest phases of your strategic plan as well. Uh, walk before you can run. There's, there's a lot of that in the survey uh, and it'll give you a good idea for where you really need to start. Uh, our, our organization at Duke, we have um, achieved stage, step, stage seven MRAM, the EHR, uh, in both ambulatory and acute settings. We're also a Hims davies Award winner, uh, and we, are, we were the first organization to re receive uh, stage seven for the analytics maturity model. Uh, Duke puts a lot of faith in the maturity models because I think it gives us a lot of best practices to deploy out. And one of the things that I know our MRAM folks do for the EHR is use the feedback from our uh, MRAM applications towards designing what our near-term and medium-term strategic plans uh, are going to reflect. Workflow expectations. Validation of workflow expectations, I think, was something um, I was hoping for and, and I got. Uh, we, and I've used this one already. So we have a relatively powerful site within a powerful specialty in my organization who wanted to follow something of a, a kludgy workflow. They wanted a, a DICOM modality work list but didn't want to take the necessary steps to support one being routinely used and, and maintained. Uh, getting the list of best practices from the survey was an additional uh, building block, a foundation for me to stand on in pushing back against what amounted to a bad idea. Uh, and I had leadership support as well. 
perhaps I would have gotten leadership support without the DM, just on the basis of track record, but it adds a little bit of extra support in any leadership argument uh, that in, in this particular case recently was helpful for me. The survey also helped keep me up to date around the things that were happening at, at Duke. Imaging in the lower volume specialties, I think, is really hard to do well. It's hard, it's hard to do imaging well in, in lots of specialties, but in the lower volume specialties in particular. Uh, and I mentioned ophthalmology earlier. There are lots of things I didn't know about how ophthalmology or gastro, um, how they functioned. So it was, it was nice for me to take the survey and give me a chance to talk to some of my team, teammates around Duke again. And then finally, um, I was fortunate to be part of our MRAM stage seven ambulatory and acute care designations, as I said, and the site visits and taking the survey, um, they were both valuable. Taking the survey, giving us an idea for what the basics were, going through the site visit process to make sure that we were putting our best feet forward. Uh, we were sharing the best practices around our organization. Uh, it gave us reason to celebrate and pursuing these uh, a survey like the, the DM, um, it gave extra support for my team uh, and for my budgeted time to be able to make sure that I was doing the right things and my team was doing the right things for Duke patients. Uh, and in, in one case, actually, we were able to justify just recently uh, a new analyst FTE coming to our EHR imaging team to support image, enterprise imaging specifically because we made the case that we should be doing XYZ in enterprise imaging faster uh, with some support from the survey. So we were able to justify a new person coming to our analyst teams, which is hard to get in this day and age, uh, because the survey said we were particularly far behind in an area that we wanted to address. So in summary, um, I would say that the survey that Kim and Don and Cheryl and Manif and the entire team uh, putting together uh, the DM, it found our biggest gaps. It supported the projects that we already had going on to solve some of those gaps. And uh, it is informing our enterprise imaging roadmap for specifically some lagging specialties that we need to do better at. Uh, and also some of the analytics capabilities we're putting into place. The other thing it did is it gave me an additional touch point to ping leadership around my organization on the IT side and the operational side because uh, it gives us a list of best practices, a list of things we can be doing better. And, and I think any leadership in a healthcare organization is going to want to know uh, how do we compare to our peers, where can we get better? I want to thank everybody uh, for their time. I, I definitely want to thank Kim for her leadership putting the survey together. I want to thank HIMSS uh, for having the vision to put surveys like this together to make care at sites like mine better. Uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to Roger, and we will take some questions. Thank you. That was great. Thanks, Chris and Kim. We'll, we, will, we will now be moving to the question and answer portion of the webinar. During this portion of the webinar, you may ask questions via the chat window. While we wait for some questions to come in, I'll, I'll go ahead and start off with questions. Um, so do you, this seems like a good opportunity as well to collaborate among each other, you know, Department of Defense, Duke, other organizations, in, in regards to the Image, external image exchange, which is part of the um, one of the three items that, that's evaluated. Do you think that's a, a, a fair statement or what, what are your thoughts about that? I, I can take that one, I think. Um, Roger, that's a great question and really looking at interoperability is a, a priority as we move uh, through the different stages of the maturity model is an expectation to really leverage and embrace existing standards and uh, to ensure that you're, uh, as we move up the ladder, that your processes um, 
and your technologies that you leverage are standards based and that you're, you know, you're fully embracing that. I will say, though, that it's important to um, recognize in these models that we do not we take special care not to dictate the type of technology you use or how you achieve your outcomes, right? Where the model seeks to be very outcomes based. So we try to stay away from, you know, saying, oh, you must use a VNA, right? Instead, we say you need a centralized imaging repository that leaves a little bit of, um, interpretation to the the reader but um, we also want to allow I mean need to allow organizations to be able to be as flexible as they need to be leveraging their own existing technology so we're really concerned about the outcomes achieved and again to your point with interoperability we do believe that participating in standards um, is a very important way to do that and that is um, a high expectation inside the survey I'll, I'll add to Kim's for a second one thing that I that was valuable for me, I I suffer from believing that, um, and, and this is obviously not correct, but um, you know, healthcare in North America, perhaps in the United States, is uh, is very very strong, and and I I don't want to say that we have the the best care because there's a lot of things that we certainly do not. Um, and I, I, I sometimes get a little bit centric around we do a lot of things really well. In taking the survey, it was very obvious to me uh, to get smacked back into place that the organizations from around the world who do imaging exchange, specifically, Roger, to your question, they do imaging exchange better in most other places than, than what the United States does. Uh, in, in my opinion, just on the basis of the way the question was asked. Uh, in a lot of sites around the world, geographies, countries around the world, it is a, um, you know, a very standards-based, everybody signs on, it's, it's part of the deal uh, if you're going to provide health care in that geography. And uh, that level of consolidation, that level of interoperability just isn't around in the U.S., and it's a tough bar for an American site to reach that. So it was good for me in taking the survey to recognize in many cases that uh, North American sites are considerably farther behind counterparts around the world in a lot of technologies that uh, those sites would consider totally commonplace. Thanks. Uh, we had some questions roll in. This one comes from Roger Elliott. Thank you, Roger, for the question. His question is, it's clear that there's a clinical benefit to achieving higher levels of DIAM, but is there an easy way to quantify monetarily the benefit as facilities move up the model? Um, I can start with that one, and I'm sure Chris will have some comments on that as well. Uh, it depends on your organization. Um, there are definitely um, cost improvement, risk avoidance, um, that should come into play as you're looking at what the overall benefit for uh, pursuing a, a journey of enterprise imaging is to some organizations that is looking to collapse the disparate footprint of storage capacities that may be associated with your different image management systems, whether it's an ophthalmology packs, cardiology, several, <laughs> several systems in cardiology, a radiology packs, women's health, uh, surgical image management. Um, so uh, in many cases, those organizations still have large storage capacities attached directly to those systems because they're managing both the short term retention needs as well as the long term retention needs. So looking at um, developing a centralized image repository, which is a stage four requirement, that actually allows organizations to reduce the amount of uh, local storage footprint attached to those systems um, by having this long-term retention capacity that is centralized. And when you upgrade, many people know this, I may only need 500 gig to get me through the next five years of study production, but 
based on whatever storage technology I use, I may be forced to buy a terabyte. So I'm really forced to buy a lot more than I need. So that's a one example. If your organization hasn't been through a storage unification um, process uh, to really to save some money, there's also some application rationalization opportunity as you look at the different image management systems or capabilities that you have in your organization. We oftentimes that find that there's redundancy. There are systems in place for a specific service line and organizations need to look at those systems and the capabilities of those systems before they purchase yet another system, right? It may be the right answer that that, that next system purchase is required, but it could also be that you have an existing application that could already serve those needs and you're just not thinking in that way. Um, and then of course, things like reducing the number of CDs that you're producing, um, the burden that you're putting on your patients by tr being the transport of clinical information, um, which ties into patient satisfaction. Um, also then being able to look at other areas of more efficient workflow processes and care coordination and retaining the images that you need that you may be billing uh, reimbursement for, for different types of point of care ultrasound guided procedures. So there's additional revenue reimbursement opportunities that could be held as well. So again, all of that differs uh, sometimes fairly significantly between organizations, but there definitely are ways to uh, justify cost improvement as well as uh, um, cost risk avoidance through security and failed CMS audits for not having the proper documentation, things like that. Um, Chris, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great answer, Kim. Let's, let's try to get one more question before we get to okay. the top of, top of the offer, if you don't mind. Here, this one comes from Sean Lambright. In regards to governance, what role does the non-clinical leadership like the CIO, CTO have in adhering to the DIAM methodology? Chris, why don't you take that one if you're comfortable since I got the last one. Yeah, sure. Um, any healthcare C-suite person is going to care about a few things. They're going to care about providing fantastic care. In many cases, the IT C-suite increasingly has physician leadership involved. Uh, it may not be, but in many cases, there are uh, informatics savvy physicians that are fulfilling those roles. And because they are physicians, they're going to care not just about um, the informatics aspects of it, but clinical side as well. They're going to care about keeping their people happy uh, with respect to physician satisfaction, uh, patient satisfaction, employee satisfaction. They're going to want to care about trumpeting good work. So if you can get to a stage six or seven, you're going to uh, want to publicize that to show it off to uh, the stakeholders within your organization and around the organization uh, outside. The job I think of, of physician leadership at, at those levels is going to be to understand what in this case enterprise imaging is, what value it can unlock, um, what it can bring to the clinical security uh, financial aspects of your organization, analytics areas of your organization, and empower the people who are doing the work day to day to take the survey and um, find out where the gaps are, advocate for solving those gaps and making them happen. They, you know, the, the primary job of, of C-suite realistically is to uh, break down the barriers to the most high yield uh, improvements happening. So those folks should be aware of what's on the survey. They should be aware of what the best practices are um, and find ways to help support those physicians and non-physicians in the organization running the governance groups to address them, to address the needs that are out there today. That's my personal opinion um, on, on the role of a CIO, CTO, CMIO uh, in partaking in uh, one of the HIMSS surveys, whether it's enterprise imaging or analytics or security or uh, the EHR. In many cases on a site visit, they're gonna be front and center talking about what the organization is doing. Uh, but to get to that point, you have to support people in your organization taking the survey, 
uh, and making the improvements so that you can get to a stage six or seven level. Great discussion, guys. Uh, unfortunately, we're at the top of the hour. It's 159, so we do have to wrap up. Thanks again, Dr. Roth and Ms. A uh, Chris, uh, Mrs. Gary. Really appreciate it. The community is continuously working to provide guidance in the rapidly evolving medical imaging informatics space. In addition to the previously published seven PIMS, SIM Enterprise Imaging Collaborative White Papers, the community is proud to present two new white papers coming next month focused on education and interoperability and standards. The community invites you to join us at the following sessions and events on Wednesday, February 13th at HIMSS 2019 in Orlando, Florida. Hopefully it's warmer there than it is in DC right now. HIMSS SIM Enterprise Imaging Roundtable using the HIMSS digital imaging model to advance your imaging strategy. Two, HIMSS SIM Enterprise Imaging Community Meetup enhancing the value of enterprise imaging strategies across the continuum of care. Three, BIAM launch announcement. The community has a revolving membership door and is always open to any member of the SIM and or HIMSS community. We invite you to join us. And lastly, members are eligible to receive SIM, IIP, and CPHIMS credits for participation in this webinar. Please complete the survey and indicate your request to receive credits at the close of the survey. Thanks again for joining us, and we look forward to continuing the discussion.